So this is a combo deck that we had played uh, in standard, actually, at one, one point that uh, we're revisiting here in Historic. <laughs> Thanks for the biddies, Boston. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, we're going to wrap up today with a... We've been doing variety segments on the weekends, and uh, we're going to play some Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, which was one of my... Um, was one of my a, uh, a favorite game of mine growing up. So I'm interested to see if that one feels like it's aged appropriately or if it's just uh, rose-tinted glasses and it's not actually that good. So we'll see. Um, this deck got a few upgrades in Historic and recent standard sets the last time we tried it. Ancient Ziggurat's a, a nice one. This deck has pretty pretty uh, strict color requirements um, with like Nightmare Shepherd and like trying to play Mana Dorks on one. So Ancient Ziggurat being a card that like helps cast this but also is an untapped land on one for these. Yeah, it definitely means. Sounds good. The actual combo on this in this deck is fairly con convoluted. Um, so how it works is if you untap with uh, Vanifier and a one mana creature and uh, a creature that is one of our six untappers in our hand, you can basically win the game with a sufficiently uh, finite large enough finite kill. So the basic idea is you start your turn with Prime Speaker and say Elfin play. Prime Speaker turns Elf into Corridor Monitor. Corridor Monitor untaps this. Corridor Monitor gets turned into Tower Scout. Tower Scout untaps this. Tower Scout gets turned into Nightmare Shepherd. Then you play, say, another Corridor Monitor or this out of your hand to get Prime Speaker Vanifier untapped. Then you um, sacrifice this to turn it into a Woe Strider which then uh, brings this back into play with Nightmare Shepherd to let you uh, untap your Vanifier. Then you sacrifice uh, the token of this to turn it into High, High Tower Scout, which untaps Vanifier. Then you uh, sacrifice the token of this to turn it into a Nightmare Shepherd, which brings back a token and untaps Vanifier and gets you another Nightmare Shepherd. Then your Vanifier can sacrifice the Nightmare Shepherd to go get a Grey Merchant of Asphodel to uh, drain your opponent for a bunch, and then you can sacrifice that gray merchant to bring it back as a trigger to drain them a bunch, a bunch, a bunch again. Um, I am trying out, so I've and previously because you need one of these in your opener. We've played four of each of these. You need one of these in your hand when you get comboing. I'm trying out four copies of Fiend Artisan today as another kind of uh, redundancy card to help us like find Vanifier and also just be like an okay value card. One of our sideboard plans is to kind of turn into a uh, green-black interactive deck. We've got Thoughtseize and Maelstrom Pulse and Chupacabras and Vivian Reads. So these cards can let us deal with um, opposing Graph Digger's Cages should our opponent uh, have one of those to stop our combo. That card is very common in this format. So kind of a turn into like a rock style deck while being a combo deck game one is the effective game plan. So Let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and see if we get to linear some people or if we just end up getting picked apart. Uh, someone asking if we're going to play a specific deck. Pretty much all the decks I play here on stream are either viewer submissions or decks off of my website. So if there's a sweet deck you'd like to see played, you're always welcome to submit it using the form on my site. Barn Burner, thanks for the quarter of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome. So keep me around. You can always see what uh, what upcoming decks are going to be uh, going to be played by checking out the queue on my website. Mana dork on the play, and all of our colors of mana sounds lovely. All right, I was giving the subscribers off a chance for magic, but people posting a lot of low effort takes and deck suggestions makes that means we're going to quickly move off of that. So <laughs> in the future, if you want to make card recommendations for a deck that we're playing, 
without getting everybody else turned off. Uh, make useful intelligent card suggestions. Why should we add that card? What problem does it solve? What should it replace? Etc. I almost toggled it and I was like, nah, I'm gonna give it a chance and then and then I was quickly reminded why why we usually turn it off here. Okay, so they're dead, right? I just need to not mess this up. So now we turn this. So this comes back, which untaps Vanifier. We turn this in to Woe Strider. We sacrifice this, which lets us get Tower Scout. I still have a corridor monitor in here, right? Yeah. So we get Tower Scout, which untaps this. And then, I believe the plan from here is we turn this goat into a one drop, and then we sack this to the Woe Strider, which lets us untap Vanifier. The Scry doesn't matter. We sack the Goose to go get Corridor Monitor. Corridor monitor comes in and untaps this. We sacrifice this. Sacrifice this to go get Nightmare Shepherd. Then we sacrifice this to untap Vanifier. My opponent's gotten bored. Eventually, eventually, this giant mess ends in a Grey Merchant. That, that series of game actions eventually end in a Grey Merchant that comes into play, drains them, and then sacrifices and drains them again. I was, I was going to fumble around for a little while before that happened. But that was the, uh, the approximate ending was going to be such. Alright, so pretty sure... Against any control decks, we board into this uh, interactive deck game plan here. I guess having a mana zork is pretty important to getting the combo going. Yeah, opponent, opponent did not really know what was going on and then appropriately died. Fiend Artisan is probably a card I want to keep. I can't decide. Maybe it's just like, maybe I just cut these two. It could be right to like pivot off of the combo game plan for the most part. Do something like this. I don't hate this. Just try and win a fair game of magic. Do we cut the Grey Merchant if opponent's gonna concede to combo anyways?
Nah, I don't want an uncastable card in my deck, Red. Back when, back when we had been playing this archetype in standard, Nightmare Shepherd just proved to be like a good threat that you could draw and cast. I don't, I don't want to jack the mana base up for a white, white card. Gonna do the historic challenge? No. I don't, I don't need to gamble. I don't need to gamble extra. There's nothing, nothing meaningful to really gain from doing that for me personally. If other people enjoy that experience, more power to them. I do not. Hmm, they're a rest in peace deck. Okay, so maybe I should board in. I didn't board in my Reclamation Sage, if I, I don't think. Fingers, fingers crossed we can just kill them by attacking here. Magic's fun. Do you play magic for fun, chat? I play magic for fun. Is there a Doom Foretold deck? Okay. Um, that means I want both Rex Sages. Fiend Artisan seems real bad. If they are uh, rest in peace us. I think I have to mulligan that, since I'm missing a color. So they'll get to Othakaya this next turn, but that's fine. We're two cards off of being able to escape it. That's probably actually a bad key break because they have double D spark in hand. To work through those wings. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I should probably just concede, right? I like just can't win this game. I 
<laughs> Correct, Seb. Only only the first seven days. Oh, we're only one match one away from Mythic two or from Diamond Two. That's sad. Nice. Not that it really matters. The historic challenge link. Click here. Alright, that deserves a treat. Nope, you're not crazy. For people, I'm, I'm tweeting it now. When you click, when you click here, it definitely gets you an article from January 10th telling you about the April 2020 historic challenge prices. <laughs> oh, what a, what a joke. Yeah, they also use Burning Trim as Serious Zero for the event, which is uh, definitely a decision. I mean that that the why the why doesn't matter, click. Just like the fact that like Yeah. Like yeah, and they're like this big Multi-million dollar company with a billion dollar parent company. Can we just like get any of the small details right? Hmm, having the a gray merchant in hand could mean that if they gain a bunch of life here, we might not be good enough. So we're hoping to draw uh, any land in our deck next turn. We're a 25 land deck. We're a 25 land deck. We kept two lands on the draw. I fully expect to miss our land drop next turn. This is, this is where the magic happens. Oh, you know what? I should probably turn the Fiend Artisans into Thought Seasons in this matchup because they're probably just too slow. I think it's probably realistic. <laughs> Have fun, J Man. Okay, nailed it, chat. Garen guaranteed third land. Broke it.
I think this is a turn four kill. If I'm counting correctly here. Peace was never an option, chat. Yeah, so next turn we start the chain and then we can play a land war elf and turn use fiend artisan to turn the land war elf into a corridor monitor to untap after we get to shepherd so we'll get the turn four combo kill them here but that's just probably not terrible if we uh if we have lands to cast our spells our, our goldfish draws pretty quick Red Rover, Red Rover, let Vanguard come over. That's true. Rest in peace would not be good for us. <laughs> Worth noting here that Fiend Artisan, being Fiend Artisan and not Thoughtseize, is pretty good for us. It's the reason why we're going to be able to combo here. Uh, this makes it easier, right? I think they were dead without this draw, but this is less clicking now. So if our opponent doesn't concede, we should be able to deal a full 20 here with Grey Merchant. Now we sacrifice Corridor Monitor. Corridor Monitor makes a token. Which untaps Vanifier. We grab uh, Woe Strider here. So this brings back a token. We go get another Nightmare Shepherd here. Opponents got time out because they're activated abilities. Yeah, it's looking like it. They have to keep clicking OK because of these two stupid things. Uh, so this is two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can sack this. And, I, and so I can do more damage here than I'm going to, but I'm just going to go for the shortest amount of clicks toward, towards lethal. So we'll get a Grey Merchant with this, which will dome them for nine. And then we'll use Woe Strider to sack Corridor Monitor, which will untap um, Vanifier. And then the untap Vanifier will sacrifice this other Nightmare Shepherd. It'll come back because of this one. We'll get the other Grey Merchant. We'll hit them for 11. And then obviously we could also... Um, we could also sack each of these gray merchants to deal another 11. So we have a 22 spare here. And like if we needed more than that 20, if we needed more than that 22, we could also have gotten more. Um, we could have also gotten more Nightmare Shepherds to up our devotion to Black Count in here. I don't think I want to sideboard in this matchup. I think we're just being linear. I 
It could be right to just bring in like Sage and Maelstrom Pulse preemptively, assuming that they're going to go for something like Rest in Peace against us. Could be right to bring in Thoughtseize. Thought sees. Does the opponent's deck play cage? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, it could be right to bring in Rex Age and Maelstrom Pulse too. I don't know. We're mostly we're mostly playing this deck to do to do the thing. So I kinda wanna like leave maximum thing potential in my deck post board. There's also some merit to like, okay, they're linear, like they could have some interaction, but like they're also a pretty linear deck, so like if they if they are mulliganing two hands that are mostly linear, we want to be able to race them. Santos Vela with the read. Hope you had a good stream. Good morning. Thanks for the thanks for the quarter of your support. Hope you're staying safe out there. Do you think this is a keep? I think we bottomed the woe strider here. I'm missing a color colors obviously, but goose like kind of makes colors. Fiend art isn't cast off at just green, which is nice. We play Elf on one here, right? Because we can go Goose Artisan on two. Oh, there was a... There's a Twitter account to Crappy Lawyer that, like, every day all it tweets out is, like, what were the top ten most clicked links on Facebook the day before? And for yesterday, the most clicked links on Facebook were like Breitbart and uh, just a whole bunch of other like right-leaning and alt-right new news sources. And it's just like, well... So I have four mana total next turn. So if I draw a land, we can Fiend Artisan. JK, LOL. So we're gonna be able to get a Vanna Fear no longer. Hold on to our corridor monitors, untap stuff with them in case we draw a Vanifier. Depending on how they draw, Gilded Goose making food technically keeps parity with the uh, the life's bounty here, which is funny. Scary. Need them to just draw lands the rest of the game now. Or at least until we can find a Vanifier. Or a, another uh, Fiend Artisan to turn something into a Vanifier. If they uh, find a couple of enchantments here, we're going to die very quickly. Right. Well, baby steps. They didn't find it to start.
flares in their hands here. Just like the most awkward back and forth weighted game. Just like they hit me for three, gain three. I hit them for three. I gain three. It's like their their deck has way more live draws in it than ours does, though, obviously, because with Four Spirit Dancer in play, any enchant creature basically turns into a series of live draws. Whereas like we have exactly Fiend Artisan and Vanifur that we're drawing towards. All right, so we'll take one more draw step here before we call it a day. So this one needs to be Ban of Fear. We're done, so. one so it might be a short set i threw this one in the queue myself because i thought it might be fun but be quickly quickly convinced otherwise did we did at least get to combo twice i suppose once per match it's about it's about how you expect it to go Could definitely be worse. Confirm mana dork. We, uh, over the summer, we had gotten in the habit of letting the kids stay up fairly late and just, like, letting them sleep whatever was convenient for them and whatnot. And, obviously, with school starting two weeks ago, we got them back into a regular routine. But on the weekends, we've been letting them, we let them stay up late if it's not a school night the night before. So Declan's learned very quickly. And his, his excitement to learn he had a three-day weekend on Friday was, uh, was very precious. Just like what? I get to I get to stay up late three days in a row. Hmm. Counter spells are a reason to play these out pre-combat, huh? So that way this will get in for more. Hmm. 
He's dead, Jim. You've killed him. If these are all lands, we have draw steps that could kill them here. I think. Maybe. Counting. Maybe. That's that's not one of them. Hey, Zalara. Thanks for keeping on with your tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Oh, Scarab God technically disrupts our our combos, doesn't it? He can steal our things in response. Witness a moat of my greedy nickel bolas, reach into the fridge and eat my food. <laughs> don't, uh, don't apologize for submitting the deck. We appreciate, appreciate the support. All right, they have a chance to mess this up here. All right, so if they have nothing but Scarab God, we assume, we assume these are blanks. We assume these are blanks. Can we can we play around Scarab God? I think so. I think we can play around the Scarab God here. I, I believe I can beat a single Scarab God activation. I have another corridor monitor left in my deck, right? There's one here, one here.
Did I mess up? I needed one. I needed one more here. I put them to one. Feel, I feel like I should have been able to kill them there. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what need to happen. I need to keep two non-token untappers. It's definitely, definitely what needed to happen. Your existence is pointless. I mean, if they languish me, I get Vanifier and Ghost Riders back. So, like, this, this happens. And I get all of these triggers, and I get some things back here. And, like, there at one. And I have a bunch of one ones, so they're dead. Oh, they didn't realize the tokens had converted mana costs. Yeah, that's definitely what happened. But I ain't realizing in real time the tokens can have converted mana costs. Yeah. Thought that, thought that it was going to clean them all up. All right, pretty sure... I'm supposed to just board into an interactive deck in this matchup. So I don't expect them to kind of make that mistake again that they made that game. Yeah, that's also true. Like, the... They kind of had a hint that these tokens had converted mana costs the way I was using them with Banafir, right? Oh, yeah, and the drain, the drain from Grey Merchant, too. Also, like, hey, these things have converted mana costs. It's a good catch, too, Bob. Yeah, the whole, the whole, our whole deck is basically based around the fact that, like, these things are allowed to have converted mana costs, right? Which, to be fair, in the opponent's defense is a kind of unique interaction. How's the deck doing so far? Uh, I mean, we've, uh, we've won a game in every match that we've played. I don't think we've won any matches, though. This deck's very soft to interaction, so, like, opponents kind of breathe in your direction and you get beat up. But if you like punking people out, I think this deck's very reasonable at doing that. He's dead, Jim. You've murdered him. Our deck is playing 25 land, so fingers crossed we just like hit our land drops naturally here. I assume we're going to lose Vivian Reed. She generates a lot of card advantage. She pluses to draw a card effectively.
Interesting. They took Nightmare Shepherd. They must have more discard spells or counter spells then. That would be that would be my assumption based on what they took there. They just like have plenty of ways to answer these things. Appropriately identifying that Vanifier is not a big deal here. We played five lands in five turns. It's a big accomplishment. I don't do that every game. It's about how I expect these games to play out, especially post-board. We're just going to get one for one into the ground. And then we eventually die of old age. And again, these are the types of games that Wizards definitely wanted to exist in Historic. These are the types of decks that Field of the Dead explicitly was chasing out. And Wizards banned Field to make these decks more competitive. What the weather is going to be like today. like it's they turn the air conditioning on Good crunch frequently we would like to run them going forward so uh cool stuff inc gave me uh store credit or permission or bandwidth or whatever you want to call it to run two of them in the side of the same calendar month, which is more frequently than we've been running them previously, but I also don't know if I want to run them with that frequency. So I elected to hold my Fiend Arters into play around a sweeper, and then we got punished by a discard spell. So again, bears, as is often the case in Magic, you kind of end up in these damned if you do, damned if you don't. You gotta kind of flip a coin and cross your fingers and hope for the best. Pun count to infinity. Thanks for the 48 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, weekend streams tend to be lower viewer count space all. If we're not, if we're not doing an open or some type of big event, it's not like my normal stream time, basically. How's the deck felt so far? Cheeky, but not competitive. You get to, it's just a novel, novel archetype. You get to kind of do your thing, but you largely lose your matches. You're capable, capable of winning games, but matches are a bit of a stretch. Especially in these heavy removal, against these heavy removal decks. Trimmed the hair? No, that was a couple of days ago. It's been, been a while. This is their seventh plan to flip this over, right? So it could probably be done. Yeah, it was the fourth grasp, but like, if it's not a grasp, it's just one of the other 800 removal spells they can play, right? I guess we'll take a draw step to see if we can get Maelstrom Pulse to kill this, but flip the, flip Nikki B is likely the end of it. My power is boundless. Man, just quality garbage time. I could sit here and like let them take game actions, but I can't win anymore, so might as well move along. So if I would have chosen to not play around Ritual of Soot and I would have played my Fiend Artisan out, we'd probably win that game. But instead, I played around Ritual of Soot and then they drew a Thought Seize and we died. Just the beats.
Well, they don't have double black to start at least, so that's nice. Playing that out pre-combat, so that way, if my opponent has a counter spell, this gets to attack for two. Opponent fairly far off from the triple black requirement that this has. We'll go ahead and Maelstrom Pulse this and crack them for seven. Play your island, please. Play your island, please. Rats. Hey, we won a match. It took Grixis. It took Grixis doing Grixis things, but we're on the scoreboard. <laughs> Yay, resource variants. Yay, Grixis. God, God bless Grixis control players everywhere. Giving, giving people playing terrible decks like us a chance to, uh, chance to get on scoreboards. Truly, truly the unsung heroes of Magic Arena. I was about to say this hand is great, and then I looked at our resource variants and was like, yep, all right. Okie doke. Is there anything about this stream, Creamy McCrunch, that makes you think I would want to gamble $10 a run on, on the Historic Challenge? That when you click on the info link to find out what the prizes are, it links you to an article from January that talks about April and says nothing about September? There's the matron on top. So probably getting Muxus next turn. Yeah, the Twisted Diana deck was excellent, Fox. I tagged it as one of the favorites for the day. I think I think it might actually end up changing my lineup for the uh Rune Terror tournament that I intend to play in at the end of the end of the month. There's such a thing as a not excellent earned chair deck. Definitely, Jin. Um, we actually hit a number of stinkers since the new set release, but that's to be expected. The tournament invite only. So there were 20 slots that players were invited for, and then there are 12 slots that they're running qualifiers for people to play in. I think that's fine. Hey, thanks for the seven months, Danich. I really appreciate the support. Welcome back. Let's keep him near around. Okay, do you have a Phyrexian Tower or do I get to... I could have a Skirt Prospector or a Phyrexian Tower, otherwise we get to live for another turn at least.
If anyone is wondering, I'm 2-0 in the event with Treasure Flare. God bless. Hearing, hearing stuff like that makes me really happy because this is like a big firm reminder for folks that magic is really gambling. <laughs> Ooh, that's great. No, do they have another another jump palm incinerator? Nope, not yet. All right, I'm just gonna go get being a fear right and hope to get another turn. Oh, oh, I can't Ancient Ziggurat with this. Oh, that's so awkward. All right, we're dead. Got it. Hmm. This Fiend Artisan's probably bad. Turning Woe Strider into Vanifier was going to be my plan. Turns out, turns out Ancient Ziggurat had other ideas. Well, I don't even know so much that I would want Ancient Ziggurat to tap for Colorless so much as that, like, I feel like if Ancient Ziggurat was designed today, I don't even think it's balanced so much as it's just, like, not good. I feel, I feel like if Ancient Ziggurat was designed today, it would also tap to activate creature abilities. I don't think that's, that's too unreasonable. Yeah. Okie doke. Bottom Grey Merchant. Turn three Vienna Fear. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, Green Castle is a good, good example. Is there a uh, jump palm, whatever, in my land war elves future? No blocks. Nope. How's pod bomb been so far? Do the thing at least once a match. Call that a success. It's definitely a do the thing deck as opposed to a strictly competitive deck. There's an incinerator on top of their deck. So we're going to have that next turn to worry about. That being said, we're going to get to go find a Nightmare Shepherd this turn, so it shouldn't be too bad. I did play games off stream. I didn't ever draw the four mana elusive, so. I don't have an answer to you. Zap, Zap's just a good card though, so it's probably fine. Definitely both. Uh, to the person that said they submitted the Uro Burn deck on my forum, if you uh, if you want to donate for that, you can. If you're not still here, I will send you an email back after my stream. But yeah, I'm okay with with uh, playing that one for science. I was underwhelmed by Hired Gun in the games that I played. I played that one in Druid. I definitely think being having more elusive threats is probably better. Uh, you can send a dono through Zalara using the the link below or cheer bits or whatever. Oh, 
Sounds definitely A-OK. -okay. For science purposes, it seems worth playing. I actually need to draw a one drop next turn, don't I? Need to draw a one drop or a corridor monitor. Uh, mono red splashing Uro. I tweeted the list out this morning. As a heads up for my magic folks, by the way, so the new set, as you probably know, comes out, is it the 17th that comes out on? The 17th? So between now and the 17th, my magic schedule is going to be a little bit lighter. I feel like I've played through most of these formats. Obviously, standard sucks right now. Historic submissions have slowed down a good bit, so I'm going to focus on... Rune Terra and variety stuff a little bit more between now and then. I'm still planning to do one magic deck per day. But not planning to do a whole bunch like I normally do. I think Fiend Artisan's good enough, huh? Is that true? Is Fiend Artisan good enough? Fiend Artisan turns into the 3-3? Three, three? The 3 drop? Yeah, it's probably better than a random. And then, obviously, when the new set drops, we'll be doing a bunch of that. We'll be having the first open. The first, uh, first, we'll be having an open again right after the new set drops. Hey, Zalra, thanks for the, thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. Get that deck added to the queue after I'm done today. So we'll do this. We'll untap Fan of Fear. I think I sack this again and get another High Tower Scout is the plan. So opponent has this gem palm incinerator to like technically interact with my board at any point. We'll see if they elect to do that or not though. So I think I just go get gray merchant now, right? This is a seven. Okay. And now I could do this, sack this, get another gray merchant. So I'm pretty sure my opponent could have, and you get, you get percentage points in decks like this with your opponent not understanding how your deck works. Like they had this doom blade the entire time that they could have used to kill something and disrupt us, but like they just didn't. So now they're dead. The Doomblade could only deal three, right? Uh, yeah, they could have killed Woe Strider, though. Killing Woe Strider means I couldn't have fully comboed kill them. Whoa, whoa, why are we... We're resolving the stack. I'm going to sack my other Grain version. That's fine. We don't have to worry about the Goblin's deck caging us, which is really nice. So I'm going to click Submit. Mr. Hello, thanks for the 26 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. <laughs> I 
Trying to call it Prime Speaker Vanifier, getting an Amazon Prime plug, seems pretty on point. She's cheese sorcery speed, if that's what you're wondering. You can't activate her as an instant. So like, while I would love to have a mana dork, I don't think I can mulligan a hand like this that's just like functional. Like has this into this. A little bit, a little bit slow, obviously, but I can certainly in the range of keep full. Benko Sue, thank you for the two entire years of support. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. What, do they not have a land? That's really good for us. And with that, I built my third rune Terra deck with about $30 spent. How uh, how long have you been playing for, Fox? Do you know how many, how many days or weeks? Curious what that, that number is probably relevant to in addition to what you've spent. Hmm. So they have enough goblins here with Incinerator. They can kill Vanifier. Like three weeks or so. Nice. I think I'm trading here because they have Incinerator on top of their deck. Definitely just putting this into play so that way when they kill her, we have Fiend Artisan here to uh, be a 3-3 blocker. Obviously expecting Prime Speaker Vanifier to die here, but this is what it is. Kinnick, thanks for 17 months. Transferring money from Jeff Sakao to Jeff Sakao. God bless. Fiend Art is in counting as uh, Devotion to Black for Grey Merchant is also not nothing. Only have two cards in here, so pretty far off of escaping that. The question is, do I Incubation next turn or do I just Grey Merchant? I probably just Grey Merchant, right? I block pretty defensively early. They might be thinking about, do they want to trade here? They might not. I do not want to trade, especially with Grey Merchant in hand. We just throw down some blockers? I think we just throw down the blocker, right? It's like swing four, play a two four. Now, Grey Merchant does mean they have decent, or Grey Merchant Chain Whirler does mean they have decent attacks here. Or they could just Buxus us, and they're guaranteed to have haste. So that's pretty appealing for them. Probably did here, I'd assume. How does that work with Snoop? How they want it to? I'm really glad they banned Winota in this format. That was definitely something that needed to go. There's definitely nothing more offensive than that. Right, let's, do, let's do one more with this before we shift gears to Runeterra. See if we can uh, combo, combo out one more time. 
it's going about as expected. We've won a game in every match. We've comboed half a dozen times. Actually won one full match against Grixis because Grixis is going to Grixis. Hey, look, it's the Amonkhet board because all of my audio just got louder. Thank you, Magic Arena, for being a quality, unit-tested piece of software. Wilson Vita, thanks for the 23 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. We keep this because that's all of our colors of mana. I don't ever need double blue, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going to start uh, a Morrowind playthrough today. And the game is half as good as I remember. Maybe we'll fit that in a couple times a month and play through most of the game. You know, I don't I don't think I actually, like, I've definitely logged, like, triple or maybe even quadruple hours into that in my teenage years. I don't think I ever actually played through the main storyline start to finish. You're probably right that it's not unit tested. A lot of game devs don't unit test despite it being really easy. Yeah. Yeah. The thing, the thing I'm more curious to see is does the game feel tedious coming back to it as an adult? Because I, I remember Morrowind's not a game that, like, gives you a pointer in a specific direction, like Skyrim and stuff like that do. There's a lot of head to this city, read some books for some clues on occasion. I'm definitely less patient in my old age. Yeah, you have to, like, double-check your journal to double-check, like, be specific at what, what people told you to do and things like that. Can't you soft lock your game in Morrowind? I don't not, not sure what exactly you're referring to by soft lock, but yeah, Morrowind had a ton of bugs and there were ways to like glitch it and like be God mode or whatever, but like it's a single player game. You should play it how you want to play it. Gen generally speaking, you should play it as like a role playing experience and like set a character up and things like that. We need to move quickly. The point the point of the game isn't to like create a God character and just like plow through all the fighty stuff. Oh, you could kill quest characters and lock yourself out of progression. Oh, yeah, that was definitely a thing, wasn't it? Yes, I think you're right that that's technically a thing. What are the odds this works? 0%? Less than 0%? Daddy shark do 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 Daddy shark do 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 Daddy shark do 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 Great. If these are blanks, they're dead. He said optimistically.
Neutralize my corridor monitor. You know you want to. We have to get double censored. <laughs> uh. Resource variance is fun. We missed our fifth land drop this turn. This is America. How dare you censor me? America! Do do you? Be do 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 do. Not so fast. I know I said I was gonna play one more, but playing against Solid Fountain has killed my desire to do that. So, uh, this deck went about as I was expecting it to go. We combo killed in every match except that last one at least once. Uh, we beat Grixis Control because Grixis Control is going to Grixis Control. Um, I don't think this deck is very competitive. I think it's kind of novel. Uh, yeah, that's about, that's about all I got. I think that's about all I got. Let's play. Let's play some Rune Terror. <laughs> 